Yeah, here we are. Jacksonville, Florida. Wow. We're going to go buy us a Home Depot, baby, for $13,400,000. And we're going to save a ton of money in taxes by doing it. Are these Home Depot papers? Yep. Let's sign them up. Sign them up. The Tarico. Feed me. Feed me. We're waiting a long time for this deal, lady. <laughs> Okay, we're paying thirteen four seventy five. Doc stamps are ninety four thousand dollars. Pay the governor. Yeah. So that Home Depot is closing today, right? Yes. All did. right. So I'm still short two and a half million dollars. What are we gonna do? Nine and five is four. Carry to one. Three and three is six. One. We need to replace sixteen point four million. Today we're purchasing Home Depot. We're missing two point eight million dollars. I may have accountants. Lawyers, I got Ben Jr. running uh, operations. I got all these people helping me, but nobody is gonna actually sit down and do what I do. What I do is I have to make sure that the 1031 is done perfectly. So the property that I'm selling matches up to the property that I'm buying. So I can defer the tax into the next deal. So the Walgreens is gonna help I drive for about four seven which maxes out about 10 million. And then we got another 10 million on my end, which is 20 million point five. Yeah. So we still need about 11 and a half million dollars worth of uh, stuff to buy. 36.9 million needs to be still. scoped out for. Now up to almost 40 million. There was something else for 10 million I'm selling, but I can't remember. Well, if the hotel goes, then we're up to friggin' 60. 70 million. Right. What are you smiling at, lady? <laughs> Get it closed today. You're gonna own a Home Depot. Today is a very special day. Today we take equity management up to the next level and closer to my retirement. We're gonna go look at a, I can say Home Depot, can I? Oh, okay. So today we're gonna look at a, what they call a triple net asset with no landlord responsibilities. I don't even have to pick up a piece of paper. You get a nice fat check every month from a major company that's traded on the uh, stock exchange. Okay, so this is the level we want to get on to diversify our portfolio and has no management and it's like putting money in a bank. You can't put this out till I'm in contract. This is gonna be pretty impressive at a real estate level. This is a whole new world. This is like being big shots. Instead of just being big, we're gonna be big shots. I get to retire soon. No, we can just we need to have these type of assets so we can really focus on those tough ones that we got. And if we can put all our efforts into that one deal instead of 20 deals, then we can really kick some ass. Right now we're spread too thin. If you want to run a real estate portfolio, you have to diversify because number one, that protects you by having all different types of real estate. If one market goes down, the other one's strong or another one's going up, keeps your strength. The problem is if you get too many projects that need time put into them or even money, then you spread yourself too thin, that could be a big problem. So by being diversified, I got some assets that require no time from anybody. All right, and they're still making the money and they're still in real estate. And then we got our hard projects, the stuff we're buying to fix up. You know, and then we got our stuff that just runs with minimal management. That's what it takes to balance your portfolio. On top of that, you gotta constantly look at the financing on it. And if the rates are going down, you gotta refinance. All right, you gotta be quiet. Now let's take it on. Hold on, here we go. Let's all bow our heads and pray. glad I upgraded to a jet. I just make the kids use the 414. Ha <laughs> It's gonna cost us thirteen million four hundred thousand dollars. It's good considering they wanted fourteen million. It's it's good enough for me right now. It's gonna save me probably half that in taxes. There's a mall big, here. Big stores. Because if they go to Publix, they go to Home Depot. They gotta eat they got a fix. Actually, I think Home Depot's the lower end of the Home Depot store. Of the Lowe's is supposed to be the more high-end brand. Yeah, 
Hello, schmoes. You know who goes to Home Depot more than anybody? Independent contractors. All the guys that get up in the morning and gotta go fix up a house. He's Thank you. Down, kick your ass Thank now. you. He's from Georgia yeah, too. Thank you. I'm, he waited. Right. He signed me. This is a good location. Turn left. The mall. Left. Oh yeah. This is a great, Come on. This is a great location across the street from the mall. Oh, big the IMAX movie. theater. Movie theater. I get too excited, Dad. When my dad gets excited. He gets quiet. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's like a poker face. He's been trained. It's it's it's. That New York right poker up. face. There's a time to fool around, there's a time to get serious. I knew when we pulled up there and that big shot New York broker came down there, that was my first time working with him. I had to make sure that he knew that I was a serious guy and I wasn't wasting his time flying all the way down from New York. So I had to make the decision right then and there that day am I going to risk a million bucks down and buy that place? Because once I go, there ain't no turning back. That's why the brokers know that I'm the guy for them. Welcome to the Orange Park Home Depot. A beautiful place, full of customers, a mall across the street, packed. I thought malls are going belly up. That mall's packed. And uh, nice, it's clean, it's got sheds in the parking lot. They're not worried about people stealing the trailers, they're leaving them out, their supplies. It must be a decent area. You know, back in the day when I started, if I saw something that nice, I would hang sheetrock in it, attach it to a building and call it a bedroom. You throw a friggin' AC in there, some power baby, and you got it made. Look at this, this is nice. This is built in America. Look at this. 5400 bucks, that's a steal. Double doors. Hey, my flat screen right there, sit my desk right here, like a U-shaped desk. Actually, not gonna work, right? I here. think you sleep up there. Put a mattress up there. Well, maybe we. Can... I don't know. I hit my head. Let's go inside. All right. So, what the hell do you look for at a building like this to buy? The, the, I mean, you what know, are you concerned well, about? Look, the neighborhood, which is good. The customers come in here, so they're making money. So Ooh, they're gonna stay hot here. Dogs. <laughs> is this one of the Home Depot that does hot dogs? You just ruined the whole thing by over a hot dog. Sorry, say that again. I saw music. I mean, you know, we're looking at it and see if it's a good, strong, thriving Home Depot. It's got a great neighborhood. It's got customers here. Good sheds. So they're making money. They're not going to go nowhere. I think they got trailers. You said that uh, they load up and they ship all over the Caribbean because the port's right near here. Right. And it's a AAA brand, great brand. And, um, you know, the building's nice and good shape. And we're not responsible for it. So, um, got you a know, house. it's great. It's not a Lowe's. Lowe's is the schmoes. My name is Cade Kern. Uh, I'm a real estate broker with Marcus and Millichap, single tenant net lease properties throughout the country. Um, here with Ben Mala. Um, we're going over this Home Depot behind you, uh, true triple net property in Orange Park, Florida, representing the seller. I got on the plane this morning, flew down here from New York for the day uh, or for the afternoon to show Ben Mala the, the, the Home Depot, the building. Um, I'll be leaving back to the city here momentarily to uh, conclude the day. We sell single tenant net lease properties. It takes a number of forms, uh, basically one tenant, one building, one lease, net, net, net to the landlord being that uh, all taxes, maintenance and insurance are covered and paid for by the tenant. Uh, this could be a retail building like this Home Depot. This could be an office building, single tenant office. It could be a couple tenants so long as it is true triple net and both tenants take care of the three ends, if you will. Yeah. Um, it takes, you know, it's industrial buildings, so this is across the country. We're located in New York City, so we deal with a lot of, you know, uh, landlords that own massive portfolios or massive buildings within the city. They want to sell them for something less management intensive. They're looking for net lease properties right. because you could own anywhere and, you know, realistically not even see the property and, and still collect the income and not have to worry about it, um, to put it plainly. So, you know, clients like Ben are, are, are frequent. This guy, is a big shot broker out of New York, okay? <laughs> He's from New York City, middle of Manhattan. The 
Big which street, Apple. Which street do you work on? Madison. Madison Avenue? Grand Central. Okay, wow. one of the most expensive streets in the country, maybe in the world. Okay, so this big shot broker, which I'm really surprised, because the brokers around here, they, you can't get them to drive 10 minutes to go show your property. They expect you to do everything on your own. This guy flew all the way down here in one day's notice from New York City. And I don't want to say, say, say your firm's name. Because yeah. I love him. He works for probably one of the best, if not the best, commercial real estate brokerages in our country, Marcus and Miller Chap. These guys are hungry. They grab deals. They make deals. They create deals. If it wasn't for guys like this, I wouldn't have a pot to piss in. Okay, between them and the banks, I'd be nobody. Okay, and thanks to brokers like this that get out here and sell this kind of real estate, that's what makes guys like me do very well in life. You know, this guy's earning his commission. Okay, <laughs> not the rest of them don't get off their ass sitting over there. They want you to do everything, and all they want to do is push some paper. <laughs> this guy is in the deal, man. He's on the ground. Getting his hands dirty, he's doing his J-O-B. What this guy does is, he sits in a big fancy office in New York City, and he's got all this information at his fingertips, because it's all public information, of who owns every single piece of real estate in the country. It's all recorded. And he tracks them down, and he calls them up and says, Hey, I see you got that Home Depot sitting down in Orange Park. You want to sell it? Uh, I represent Marcus Miller Miller Chapman. We have buyers ready to buy. And they say, hey, well, I don't know. I'll think about it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yes, I do. Whatever the case may be, he knows the story with that property. And the guy says, yeah, we've been thinking about selling it. What can you get us? And he says, well, let me do some homework. He does the numbers. He tells the guy what he thinks he can sell it for. And then he reaches out to guys like me. That's why it's all about relationships, because he knows I'm the real deal. And he calls me up and says, hey, I got a guy who wants to sell a Home Depot out in Orange Park, Florida. Great, because a good relationship means a good transaction, means you're gonna make money. So they sublease that land as part of their rent, uh, as part of their rental here. Correct. I get it. So their 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 so he, rent that they're due to you is softened so by the rent that they're I sell grand. This, even after I sell this, who gets seventy-seven grand? Home Depot. Home Depot. Not if, the guy I'm buying it from. But here's here's the thing: Fine. if Home Depot leaves, All right? Your six in you know some change cap just went to like a nine and a quarter. While no, you backfill this property, yeah. you now because you own let's that. hope that yeah. don't happen. I don't right, want the money. Want I'd rather keep Home Depot here. It's a ma that's a carve out. That's carve a carve out. out. It is separate it's tar, physically, so separate everything. It's on the parcel. It it's physically on the parcel. Uh -huh. But because it, Kmart built it a long time ago, they they engaged this developer to come in. So they gave him the rights underneath that building to put it up. They lease the building. He owns the ground underneath it. So it's on our parcel. However, we don't have a right to it at this moment. It's part time. of this lease. But Home Depot subs out that parcel lease. Correct. Correct. And it has a separate tax bill. Correct. And we're not involved in oh, whatsoever. So it's a separate parcel. But if this if the Home Depot ever yes. leaves, okay. then we get it? Yes. Okay. It terminates with the lease. They only have the rights to lease it, sublease the it, sub -lease it while they're the lease, lease holder. Right. Okay. Correct. We learned a lot here today. This is new shit to us. I mean, we haven't been in that kind of situation. I think between this and one other little land deal we're doing, it might be close to being where I need to be for right now. Now I got another breathing room of about, you know, I always under the gun, but I got yeah. another breathing room now, but another six months that's starting. Yeah. Or something I just sold last week. Okay. And then Monday, like I said, we're selling something else. I mean, there's a lot of big stuff out there that we'd love to show you. Um, I, mean, I mean, what about other know, states? So, can, I mean, I, what about Texas or, or you know, the other tax-free states, you know, Washington, if Tennessee? there's no responsibilities. Correct. And it's a good, strong area. Correct. We'll start looking at them. And I think this, Texas the would be, rate is would be worth a little better as well. This one's in Florida, still kind of kind of close to home. Yeah. Because honestly, I was trying to get a better cap rate for doing quick cash deals. Yeah. You know, but I got a lot of competition out there. I lost to Walgreens the other day. It happens, you know. Yeah. There were six offers on this in two days. I know. Home so. Depot's a good brand. Yeah. But I appreciate you getting it thrown my way. Of course. So let's lock them up and we sent you the contract, didn't we? Yeah, they're looking we're at it. We're just waiting for them to sign that contract and we're Correct. done. Assuming there's no changes. Assuming there's no changes. So then we're uh, going to contract. It's a pretty clean, simple deal. I can't imagine is. any changes. Yeah. So as long as they're willing to, you know, sign that dotted line, I'll close this thing quick. Yeah, we'll do what we can to make sure that happens. Very good, very good. Right now, I mean, this is a safe deal for us. We do have two big retail centers. We've never done office buildings. We've mm -hmm. never done industrial. So it's hard to get involved in a certain sector of real estate when you don't have any experience. Right. You know, I mean, right. I can score a great deal. I look at office buildings and say, oh my God, I get all this for 10 million bucks? Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. My house costs more than that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, what do you but do then it, there's empty offices in there. What do I do? Exactly. You know? Um, 
We'd love if to represent you. If you put in front you, of me, can. you can represent me. Yeah. That's the way I work. I'm, yeah. I am the most loyal person when it comes to dealing with brokers. Yeah. If the broker brings me the deal, he's the broker. Yeah. If he ain't the listed agent, I don't care. He's the broker. And, and a lot of times, if they want to be real, you know what, and don't pay your commission, I'll even pay the commission if you're not getting it from their side. Okay. But don't lie to me and tell me you're not getting it. You're really getting it. <laughs> yeah. I've had that try to play on me. I'm from New York too, buddy. What the hell are they cooking? It smells good. That ain't that guy. It does smell payway, good. Is it? I don't know. That ain't panda. It might be. Panda it might be. Okay. Came down here on a Saturday while other people are sitting around doing whatever, shopping at Target. But we came down here, risked our lives on this plane to travel across the state of Florida to come look at a Home Depot real estate opportunity that we're buying. And now we're going home. <sighs> Initially, we won't finance it and we'll get a 6.25% return on our money. 13.4 times 6.25, it's about 800 grand a year. Then we're gonna go to the bank, we're gonna get a loan and then we're gonna have a mortgage payment and then that's gonna come out of it. But then we're only gonna have a little bit of money invested, 20%. And then we'll have to figure out what that return is. It'll probably be 10% on our money. The point is, it's a great return. It's a great thing to help us to avoid uh, deferring our tax and it has no responsibilities. So it's perfect for diversification of our portfolio right now. Diversify, the world needs to be more diversified. From time to time, we have disgruntled employees. This one is a real cuckoo, and we're going to share it with you. But I highly warn you, the language that he uses is extremely vulgar and inappropriate. So if you don't like to hear cursing, yelling, an inappropriate language, do not, do not, do not listen to it or watch it. Play voicemail. Yes, hi. Um, I'm just wondering where you are because you're a fucking pussy piece of shit like you don't answer the phone. I know you own the hotels, and now I have no place to live. Well, I have it two, two more weeks. And I say too much sometimes because I'm a good worker. I fucking take care of everything. Um, you need to get Mary out of the hotel because I am going to fuck you up. I swear to God, when I see you, I'm going to find out where you are. You nasty piece of shit. Um... You got my number. You can send police here. You pussies only send police. I'm from fucking New York. I did everything respectful at your hotel. I fucking was honest. I took care of the people, and this is how you treat me? No worries. No worries, because when I see you, you are going somewhere to the hospital. I've been there for five, six months. I did a good job. You motherfucker, when I fucking find you, I am gonna fucking not kill you because you've taken this and you are a pussy. Oh, they call the police, they call me. <coughs> I should be calling the police on you. I'm gonna be on the street soon because of you. But I choose to break your fucking neck, you piece of shit. I am looking for you. You Fucking motherfucker! I've been so good to that hotel, and this is what you do? If you was Italian from New York, you would have did the right fucking thing. I'm gonna come and get you. I'm looking for you. I got people outside the hotel. You better call the police because they're gonna go on my side. I'm coming after you, you piece of shit. 
You know, I have everything I did for that fuck hotel, everything I fucking put up with in that hotel. You doing this to me? You motherfucker, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm going to kill your whole family. Anyway, thanks for joining us on The Blast of the Past. I hope you enjoyed seeing what the hell I was doing two years ago. Now, I gotta get my ass out there and get back to work. What are you doing today? Call me up. BenMallon.com. Consult with Ben. Make a deal. Find a deal. Do it. Adios, amigos. <laughs>